Class 10, Lesson Life Processes, Topic Excretion, Video Number 8. Students, in this topic, I will be discussing about the human excretory system, the structure and working of nephrons, formation of urine, the process of urine formation will be discussed. Then, I will be discussing about hemodialysis, the basic principle involved in dialysis will be discussed over here. Then, I will we'll, be discussing about how excretion occurs in plants. Excretion is the process of removal of metabolic waste from the body. Now, what are metabolic waste? Now, before that, uh, you should know what is metabolism. Metabolism is the sum total of all the biochemical reactions that are going in our body or in our cells. So, as a result of those reactions that are going in our body, lots of waste materials are produced. An example of that can be the process of respiration. In the process of respiration, the metabolic waste that is released is carbon dioxide. And we all have discussed, I have already discussed that how carbon dioxide is removed out of the body by the process of exhalation, right? But apart from carbon dioxide, there are also nitrogenous waste released or they are produced during uh, this protein metabolism or when nucleic acids or those nitrogen containing organic compounds, when they are metabolized, that is when they take part in various biochemical reactions, then during that nitrogenous waste are produced like urea, uric acid, etc. And these nitrogenous waste are highly toxic to our body. If they accumulate in our body, then that they may cause harm. In severe cases, these metabolic waste, if they accumulate, that is if they get collected in our body, they may lead to the death of the individual also. Right? So, they have to be removed and this process of removal of such metabolic waste from the body is what is called as excretion. Now, the process of excretion, along with the process of excretion, there is another process that goes simultaneously and that process is called as osmoregulation. Osmoregulation is the process of maintenance of water and salt balance in the body. Right? What does it mean? If water and salt are more in the body, then they will be excreted out or thrown out. And if the concentration or the level of water or salt is lesser in the body, then that is, to, that is going to be retained in the body. So, both these processes excretion and osmoregulation goes simultaneously. Now, there are different strategies adopted by different organisms for removal of waste materials. Like for example, if uh, here uh, if you go with the unicellular organisms like amoeba, in case of amoeba, in case of amoeba or paramecium, you find that the body of the organism is just a single cell and here by simple diffusion the metabolic waste like carbon dioxide or it is urea or ammonia whatever metabolic waste are they they will be directly thrown out by simple diffusion. So, the process of diffusion removes the metabolic waste in unicellular organisms. Also these organisms they do not have any proper system but in case of uh, uh, these uh, freshwater unicellular organisms you find there is an organelle present called as a contractile vacuole which helps in removal of excess of water and some amount of waste that is removed with the help of these. But then most of the waste materials again here again the waste materials are thrown out of the cell by the process of simple diffusion. But in case of organism multicellular organism like us we have got an organ system, a complex organ system is present in case of human beings and this organ system that you see, this is called as the excretory system, this is called as the excretory system. So, we human beings have excretory system with kidneys the main, uh, the main organ of excretory. So, the strategies used by different organism is that in case of unicellular organisms, they remove their waste materials by simple diffusion. The waste materials are removed by simple diffusion. 
whereas multicellular organisms like us if we take we ourselves as an example they have excretory system with kidneys at the as the main organ of excretion now learn about uh, the human excretory system the human excretory system is involved in both removal of waste materials as well as in osmoregulation and the important organs of the human excretory system are just when you see this diagram you find that the important organs are the kidneys a body has got a pair of kidneys this one is the left kidney and this is the right kidney right then we have got a pair of ureter the tubes that you see which are arising from the kidney these are called as a ureter then urinary bladder and the urethra so urinary bladder and urethra these four that is kidneys the ureter the urinary bladder and the urethra are the main organs of excretion let us now learn about each of these one by one first the kidneys the kidneys as you see they are located in the abdominal cavity this cavity that we have okay where your stomach intestine are located that cavity is called as a abdominal cavity this is called as a abdominal abdominal cavity so kidneys are located in the abdominal cavity almost closer to the waist and they are attached to your back wall they are not present in the front rather they are attached to your back body wall right and each of the kidney if you find they are present on either side of your backbone or the vertebral column so that's the location of kidneys kidneys they are located in the abdominal cavity or in the abdomen they are attached to your back wall and they are, they are present on either side of your backbone the kidneys as you see they are bean shaped they are reddish brown and these are bean shaped right so that's the location of the kidney one more very important thing that you see when you will be learning about the endocrine glands the glands that secrete hormones you will be learning over there that there is a gland which is attached on the top of the kidneys this gland that is present on the top of the kidney that's called as a adrenal gland function of which you will be learning in the chapter control and coordination so is a these glands the adrenal glands are present on the outer surface on the upward outer surface of the kidney and they have got some role to play to they release a hormone called as adrenaline which helps you to fight against emergency right so that's and the function of kidney if we go with the function of kidney the function of kidney is to purify blood that's the first important function of kidney that is to purify the blood means what to remove nitrogenous waste such as urea uric acid i just now told you that carbon dioxide is also a metabolic waste the carbon dioxide is thrown out by the process of exhalation the lots of nitrogenous waste which are also produced in our body like urea uric acid creatine creatinine and these nitrogenous waste are highly toxic if they are retained in our body then they are going to harm us okay so that has to be removed and that is done with the help of the kidneys and that to what in the kidneys in the kidneys there are tiny filtration units which are called as nephrons so about which you'll be learning in the next slide so the nephrons they are the, with the help of these nephrons the waste which are present in the kidneys are removed and the the blood is the waste which are present in the blood are removed and the blood is purified so that's a most important function of kidney and other important function of kidney is to maintain water and salt balance in the body that is osmoregulation so kidneys they two they have two important function to perform one is purification of blood that is excretion and other is osmoregulation you see how is this blood brought to the kidney Uh, try to recall when i had discussed about the human heart i said you that the heart is four chambered just look at to this diagram this is the left ventricle so from the left ventricle the oxygenated blood is taken to all the distant parts of the body by means of aorta this is already discussed right so this oxygenated blood is taken to different parts of the body by means of aorta so when this aorta reaches the level of kidney 
okay when it reaches the level of kidney the aorta gives just this is the aorta okay this one is the aorta so when it reaches the level of kidney the aorta gives two branches just see the red vessels so these two branches that you see these two branches they are called as the renal arteries okay this is the this one this is the left renal artery and here is the right renal artery okay this one is the right renal artery so this renal artery then takes the blood into the kidney and there in the kidney with the help of nephrons which are the filtration units present in the kidney the blood gets purified that is the blood uh, all the, in from the blood the nitrogenous waste that are present will be removed the excess of water and salts that is present is also removed because kidney has already stated to you that it has two functions to perform one is purification of blood one is to purify blood and other is to maintain water and salt balance that is osmo regulation so both the things occurs in the kidneys that is when the blood is taken by this renal artery inside we'll discuss in the next slide how this happens so the blood is purified water and salt balance is maintained and then this blood which is free from all kinds of nitrogenous waste which has been purified is taken out of the kidney by the blood vessels which are called as the renal veins so these blue lines that you see so the renal vein is the one which is going to take out the blood from the kidney and these renal vein joins the vena cava try to recall you had learned in the topic of heart that the heart receives blood from all the different parts of the body by means of vena cava there is a superior vena cava which will be getting blood from the upper parts and there is an inferior vena cava and both this vena cava open in the right atrium this is the right atrium so this renal veins they take the blood which is rich uh, which is free from nitrogenous waste but then it is deoxygenated okay so this blood is taken out of the renal veins and the renal veins then join the vena cava and this vena cava then takes the blood to the heart so this is how the blood is taken to the kidneys and then from the kidney it is taken back right now the blood which is brought to the kidney right this blood will be oxygenated one thing is the blood will be oxygenated right because it's being brought from the heart it is oxygenated but at the same time it will be rich in waste it will be rich in nitrogenous waste so this is the nature of blood which is brought to the kidney and the nature of blood that is taken from the kidney to other to the heart back to the heart that uh, the nature of that blood will be that the blood will be deoxygenated the blood is going to be deoxygenated that will be rich in carbon dioxide and other thing is that the blood will be free from waste because the waste materials the night when i say waste i mean the nitrogenous waste so the waste materials will be removed with the help of the nephrons the waste materials are removed so this is uh, the function of kidney that is to purify blood and and to maintain the water and salt balance and that the kidney does with the help of nephrons which will be taught uh, in the slides the later slides it will be told then the next important part of the human urinary system is a pair of ureter you see arising from the concave side of the kidney you see this is the concave side of the kidney with this concave side or this this side is called as a hilus so from the hilus the uh, ureters they they are long tubes whose wall is made up of smooth muscles involuntary muscles so the ureter arises from the kidney one ureter ureter from each kidney arises and this ureter finally it joins the urinary bladder and the role of this ureter the role of the ureter is to take the urine because blood is purified and blood blood is sent back but the waste materials which is obtain after filtration of blood is what is called as a urine so urine that is formed in the kidney will be taken by the ureter to the urinary bladder 
okay so finally the ureter it carries the blood to the urinary bladder and so the ureter carries urine to the urinary bladder and there in the urinary bladder the urine gets filled up okay so the role of urinary bladder is to store urine this is the function of urinary bladder it stores the urine until it is expelled out of the body okay the wall of the urinary bladder is also made up of involuntary muscles right so once the urine gets filled up so when it when the urine starts getting filled up in the urinary bladder the wall of the urinary bladder it starts stretching and because of this stretching the there are some stretch receptors there are some stretch receptors which are present in the wall of urinary bladder receptors are those specialized nerve cells which receives the stimulus so stretch is the stimulus that is received by the receptors and these receptors then on receiving this information that the urinary bladder is getting stretched this message is sent to the brain and when the brain comes to know about that the urinary bladder is filled up and it is to be emptied you get the urge of urination and when when urination or micturation occurs then the it's all under the nervous control the uh, this uh, muscles which are present in the wall of the urinary bladder they start contracting and this is when this happens the urine that is stored in the urinary bladder is expelled out through a tube this tube that you see this tube is called as the urethra so urethra through urethra this urinary uh, this urine which is stored in the urinary bladder is expelled out so these are the important parts of the human urinary system they are one is the kidney here this is the left kidney and this one is the right kidney right so kidney's function is to purify blood and to maintain water and salt balance that is done with the help of nephrons then arising from the kidney are the ureters the role of ureter is to cut take the urine from the kidney to the urinary bladder then next important part that is kidney ureter next important part is the urinary bladder and the role of urinary bladder is to store urine and finally the urethra that is the fourth part of the excretory system and the role of this urethra is to throw out the urine okay so urine is thrown out of the urinary bladder through the urethra so these are the important parts of human excretory system okay so here just have a look at the notes i'm just going to read it out for you oxygenated blood which is rich in the first point is the oxygenated blood that is rich in nitrogenous weight waste is brought by the aorta and this is then taken into the kidney through the renal artery then the deoxygenated blood which is free from nitrogenous waste is taken out of the kidneys by the renal veins and they later join the vena cava i had told you that vena cava is the one which is blood vessel which is going to take the blood to the heart okay then ureter is the next important part of the urinary system and these are thin tubes that carry urine from the kidneys to the urinary bladder the next important part of the urinary system is urinary bladder and the role of it is to store urine till it is expelled out and the fourth important part of the excretory system is it is a narrow muscular the it's it's the urethra which is a narrow muscular tube that carries the urine from the urinary bladder to the exterior so these are uh, the important parts of the uh, urinary system the kidneys purify blood with the help of tiny filtration units present in them which are called as the nephrons okay each kidney has got around 1 million nephrons they are the nephrons are very small and these nephrons they are tubular structures as you can see in this diagram of nephron these nephrons are highly coiled tubular structures and uh, they help the kidney to do both the functions that is they help them to purify the blood okay and also they help them to remove excess of substances like excess of salt or water which is present in the 
blood so in the way of purification what is produced is the waste and the that waste or is what is called as a urine so the urine then is let out of the body so this purification of blood inside the kidney is done with the help of these nephrons have a look at this diagram of kidney so this is the longitudinal section of kidney this diagram that you see is a longitudinal section of kidney this shows where the nephrons are located okay so you can as you can see over here this is the location where nephrons are present so this is the here there are two nephrons being shown this vessel that you see this one the red vessel that you see is the renal artery that is taking nitrogenous waste into the kidney and then the renal artery divides into many finer branches have a closer look to this it divides into after entering into the kidney the renal artery divides into many finer branches and then one of the branch of this renal artery will enter the nephron where purification about which i'll be telling you in the later slide so where purification occurs so this shows that purification occurs in the nephrons and there are millions of nephrons like each kidney having around a million of nephron so all those nephrons together purify the blood and produce the waste and the waste that is produced that is what is the urine so from the nephron this waste that is produced by the nephrons it is let into this part of the kidney which is called as a pelvis and from here this waste or the urine is then taken out through the ureter okay and the purified blood the blood after purification because waste will be let out into the ureter as already stated to you but the blood which has got purified will be taken up by the renal vein out of the kidney so now let us learn about the structure of a nephron each nephron has got two parts one is the cup shaped part of the nephron and the other is the tubular region of the nephron the cup shaped part of the nephron in the diagram the cup shaped region of the nephron is called as the bowman's capsule and the other half of the nephron is the tubular region which has got three important parts just have a look closer look at the diagram the first part of this tubular region this particular part of the tubular region is highly coiled then after that the tubule makes a loop so there is a loop present and then it is again coiled okay so there are three parts in the tubular region that is you've got this first part of the tubular region is highly coiled the yellow part that just have a look at the yellow part Uh, leaving the blood capillaries so this is called as a proximal convoluted tubule which you are not to learn in detail yeah, that's only for class 11 and all uh, next is a loop this loop is called as a henley's loop this is called as the henley's loop and the third part of the nephron is again highly coiled this is called as a distal convolu convoluted tube okay and finally this tubular region of the nephron joins the collecting duct okay so these are the three uh, these are the parts of the nephron that is the bowman's capsule and the tubular region which finally joins the collecting duct and into the collecting duct as you can see many nephrons will open so many nephrons open into the collecting duct and what you find is that these collecting ducts that i have told you the collecting ducts all these collecting ducts that you see they open into this region which you see so in this region of the kidney all these collecting ducts the collecting ducts will open in this regions okay these these what you see as pyramidal forms they are called as a renal pyramids which is a collection of collecting ducts and all these collecting uh, this uh, renal pyramids that open into this particular region of the kidney that's called as a pelvis of the kidney and from there the urine will be taken into the ureter right so this is how the nephrons are arranged okay 
Now let us see in detail about how blood is brought to the nephron and how does the nephron purify the blood. So as already stated to you that the renal artery like into the kidney just into the kidney it is the renal artery the dorsal aorta or the aorta after reaching the kidney enters the kidney by sending a branch which is called as renal artery and this renal artery then after entering the kidney will give off many finer branches. So one of the branch of renal artery this one branch of renal artery then moves into the Bowman's capsule as shown in this diagram. Just have a look at it. The branch of the renal artery it over here you can see the branch of the renal artery it enters the Bowman's capsule and after entering the Bowman's capsule it forms a network of capillary. This network of capillary that you see in the Bowman's capsule is called as glomerulus and this is the place where filtration of blood occurs. So glomerulus in the nephrons can be compared with the network of capillary that you find in the alveolar region. Try to recall when it was told to you about when I had discussed about the human respiratory system there I had told you that alveoli or the air sacs where exchange of gases occur they also have a network of capillary around that. Okay, so there the function of that network of capillary is to help in gaseous exchange. But here this network of capillary that you see in the Bowman's capsule, this network of capillary which is called as glomerulus, this helps in purification of blood or filtration of blood. That is it will help in removal of nitrogenous waste like urea, uric acid and all is removed. Right? So this renal artery it in the Bowman's capsule it will be sending a branch, a fine branch which forms a network and after forming this network that is glomerulus this branch of the renal artery will again come out okay and then after coming out of the Bowman's capsule before joining the renal vein this branch before joining the renal vein again forms a network of capillary around the tubular portion of the nephron as you can see in the diagram okay so this is how the nephron's uh, structure is or the blood vessels are arranged okay that is the branch enters branch of renal artery enters it forms a network in the in the bowman's capsule called as glomerulus then this branch comes out of this bowman's capsule and before joining the renal vein it will again form a network of capillary as you can see in the diagram there is a network of capillary present around the tubular region and then this all these capillaries again join they join again and then finally they will form a, a branch of vein which later on joins the renal vein and this renal vein will move out of the kidney and join the vena cava. Now let us study how the nephrons help in purification of blood and formation of urine. So as just now told to you that the renal artery gets impure blood that is the blood which is rich in nitrogenous waste that is brought by the renal artery and on entering the uh, kidney the renal artery will give off many branches so one of a finer branch of the renal artery which is called as a efferent arteriole this branch enters the Bowman's capsule and there in the Bowman's capsule it forms a network of capillary as just now told to you this is called as a glomerulus now as the blood as the blood flows through this glomerulus Glomerulus is made of a fine network of capillary. So as the blood flows through the glomerulus, what happens is finer molecules, the molecules whose size is smaller than the size of the pores present in these capillaries, so finer molecules like what? Like water, amino acids, some of the salts and the waste materials like urea, uric acid, waste like 
urea, uric acid, then creatine. These are the waste that are to be removed. But along with these, other smaller molecules, molecules which are too small, they are so small that they can pass out of the capillary. So those includes the that water molecules, glucose, amino acids, and the salts like many of the ions these also that many of which the body will not be uh, able to lose it cannot afford to lose it those all these molecules also pass out of the capillary and enter into the bowman's capsule forming the primary filtrate so the filtrate here in this place that is in the bowman's capsule this filtration uh, occurs and this filtration that occurs through the walls of the capillaries this filtration is called as ultra filtration it's called as ultra filtration and the primary filtrate that is formed the primary filtrate that is formed over here this is the filtrate is not urine as it is highly dilute one thing and it has got many important substances that the body cannot afford to lose there is glucose present there is amino acids present and the filtrate is highly dilute it has got excess of water so glucose amino acids and many of the salts or electrolytes the body can't lose so that has to be taken back into the blood but that also goes out of the capillary wall and enters into the Bowman's capsule. So this filtrate that is formed over here is a primary filtrate. And if you take, like if, uh, if uh, the primary, a uh, total amount of primary filtrate that is formed every day, if that is taken into account, that comes to around 180 liters of primary filtrate if all the nephrons are taken together. But then the amount of urine that is put out per day is not more than one and a half liters to two liters. Means what? This means that the excess of water and many of the important substances that has moved out into the Bowman's capsule now will be reabsorbed. So this reabsorption part of those important substances occurs in the tubular portion of the nephron. Okay. So now let's see how this happens. Now as just now told to you that the filtrate moves into the Bowman's capsule and this filtrate now will pass through the tubules. So this yellow tubes that you see, so that is, it is through these tubes that the filtrate passes. Okay, and as just now I have told you that around this like uh, the renal artery after coming out the branch of renal artery after coming out of the moment's capsule it for again forms a network this network of blood capillary you can see so it forms a network so now what happens is that as this filtrate moves through the tubular portion many of the important substances that the body cannot afford to lose means what excess of water the salts okay glucose amino acids these things move out of this tubular portion and they are absorbed by the blood capillaries that are present are, uh, around the tubular portion so in this way as the filtrate moves down through the tubule as it goes up it will, the filtrate will be passing through this first coil region that's called as a proximal convoluted tubule and then will be moving into this loop as you can see there is a loop so it passes through this loop and then it passes again through this distal convoluted tubule so when this happens then what happens is that the these important substances like water like amino acids will come out of this tubules and will go into the blood capillary right and the filtrate as it moves out of this the filtrate as it moves out of the uh, tubular region as it goes out of the tubular region it will become concentrated and finally when this filtrate moves out of the collecting duct this filtrate will be highly concentrated and this filtrate that comes out of the collecting duct that is now referred to as urine okay so this is how the nephrons they help both in purification where the place where purification is occurring is this Bowman's capsule.
through this glomerulus and other function I said you it helps in maintenance of water and salt balance that is occurring through the process of reabsorption and that happens in the tubular region. Now one more very important thing to sell, uh, tell you is that as just now I said that water is reabsorbed from the tubular region and along with water glucose amino acids are also reabsorbed but nitrogenous waste will not be reabsorbed. So nitrogenous waste is going to go out okay as the filtrate passes and becomes concentrated. So water is reabsorbed. Now the amount of water, the amount of water that is reabsorbed through this tubular region into the blood capillary, this amount of water depends upon two factors. So what are the two factors? The one is that it is the amount of water present in your body. If the amount of water present in your body is less, then less reabsorption of water. Sorry, if the amount of water present in your body is less, if your body cannot afford to lose more water, then the reabsorption from the tubular region will be more. And the urine that will be put out will be highly concentrated urine. But if the amount of water, if suppose you drink a lot of water, then the amount of water in the filtrate will be the amount of water in your body will be more so the there you find that the reabsorption will be lesser and highly dilute urine will be let out so the amount of water that is reabsorbed will depend upon two factors first factor is the amount of water that is present in your body that is the first factor and the second factor is the amount of waste that is present if more waste is present then more water will be required and so reabsorption will be uh, lesser okay so and if less waste is there then less water will be required and reabsorption will be more so those are the two factors and finally after reabsorption the filtrate that comes out into the collecting duct that will be highly concentrated and will be rich in nitrogenous waste like urea uric acid etc but glucose amino acids they all those all important things and many of the important salts like if salts are in excess then they are they'll be thrown out they won't be absorbed reabsorbed but if there is a lesser salt in the body then those salts will be reabsorbed so Finally, the filtrate that comes out of the collecting duct, this filtrate will be highly concentrated and that is referred to as urine. Okay. So these are some of the important points that you need to remember about urine formation. First important point is that when the blood flows through the glomerulus, the blood gets filtered and the filtrate gets collected in the Bowman's capsule. Then Second important point is that the filtrate passes through the tubular portion and as this filtrate flows through the tubular portion, some of the important substances present in the initial filtrate that was collected by Bowman's capsule, these substances like glucose, amino acids, salts and the major amount of water, these things are selectively reabsorbed okay, in the tubular portion and from there they are taken into the blood uh, capillaries they are reabsorbed into the blood capillaries the capillaries join the renal vein and then the renal vein takes this blood to the vena cava which then takes it to the body now the other important thing is that the amount of water that is reabsorbed depends upon two factors those two factors are the first factor is the amount of excess water that is present in our body and the amount of dissolved waste that is to be excreted out okay so these are the important points that one needs to remember now once the urine is formed once this urine is formed the urine is collected by the collecting duct and these collecting duct then take this urine into the pelvis region this region that you see of the kidneys call is a pelvis so in this region the urine is collected and from this region from the pelvis the urine is taken into the it is it is taken into the ureter right and from the ureter this ureter now through peristaltic movement ureter through peristaltic movement it takes the urine into the urinary bladder and the role of urinary bladder as already discussed so the role of urinary bladder is to store urine 
so as urine gets collected in the urinary bladder the bladder wall starts stretching and when the bladder wall starts stretching this information is collected by the stretch receptors the receptors then convey this message to the brain and one gets the urge of urination so when you get the urge of urination the muscle and when when someone urinates it's because the muscles contracting and that causes the urine to be taken out of the body through the urethra so through the urethra the urine is let out of the body okay so this is how the kidneys help in purification of blood and thus as a result of purification of blood urine is formed which is expelled out of the body kidneys are a very important as just now discussed they help in purification of blood and removal of nitrogenous waste that are present the nitrogenous waste includes urea uric acid creatine creatinine and these wastes are highly toxic but at times because of certain reasons like infection injury or restricted blood flow the kidneys may not function well and in severe cases the kidneys may stop even stop functioning this condition is called as renal failure in such cases when the kidneys do not function well or fail to function the waste materials or the toxic waste or poisonous waste starts accumulating in the body and they start damaging the organs in severe cases it may even lead to the death of the person so to avoid this if a person is having kidney failure the person can go for dialysis okay there is other way also to go for transplantation but here i'll be discussing about the basic principle that is involved in the process of dialysis first let us know what is dialysis dialysis is the process of removing excess water solutes and toxic waste from the blood of a person whose kidney is no more functioning properly okay and this is done with the help of an artificial kidney or hemodialyzer or also called as dialyzer which is a device to remove nitrogenous waste produced in the blood through the process of dialysis so now let us see how this dialyzer work and how is dialysis done now the artificial kidney basically consist of a tank as you can see in this diagram this tank is called uh, it is the the main uh, thing of this dialyzer and in this tank a highly coiled tube whose wall is made up of a selectively permeable membrane is placed so the tube the red tube that you see here is the tube whose of a made up of a selectively permeable membrane right try to recall you have learned in class 9 that selectively permeable membranes are those which allows only certain substances to move in and out now the dialyzer is filled up with a dialyzing fluid okay so a dialyzing fluid is placed in this dialyzer and the osmotic concentration of the dialyzing fluid is the same as that of the blood okay this is maintained so blood of a normal healthy persons the osmotic concentration of the dialyzing solution or the osmotic pressure of the dialyzing solution is same as the of the blood of a normal healthy person except that the dialyzing solution does not contain any nitrogenous waste so that is not present now what is done is that when a person comes for dialysis then the blood because a person will have lots of uh, waste material because the kidneys of that person is not functioning so there will be lots of nitrogenous waste material there may be excess of water salts also present so to to do away with these things what is done is that the blood of the person is taken out from an artery and this blood is made to flow into this dialyzer the blood will flow through this tube just have a look at the picture the blood from the person's body is taken out and this blood is made to flow through this tube which is made up of a selectively permeable membrane now as this blood flows through the tube i had just now told you that the the tank is filled up with the dialyzing solution whose concentration is same as that of the blood 
of a healthy person except that this does not contain any nitrogenous waste so as the blood flows through this tube those nitrogenous waste which are present in the blood the nitrogenous waste which are present in the blood will come out of the tube because the tube is selectively permeable so they are going to come out of the tube and they will go into the dialyzing fluid nitrogenous waste excess of water salts these are going to come out of this tube the blood is going to flow through the tube but the waste nitrogen because those waste are present only in the blood this excess of water there may be salt present so that's present in the blood and outer solution has got the concentration of pressure as that of a blood of a normal healthy person so these things come out and this passes into the dialyzing solution and then finally the blood that comes out of this dialyzer this is going to be free from all kinds of nitrogenous waste so this blood is then made to it is then again it is pushed or it is taken back it is put back into the person's body and time to time the dialyzing solution which is being put into the tank is taken out and fresh dialyzing solution will be put into the tank so this is the basic principle that is involved in the in the working of an artificial kidney remember that the artificial kidney can only purify blood it can only remove the nitrogenous waste the excess of water and salt that is present in the blood of a person whose kidneys are not functioning but this artificial kidney cannot do the second thing that is done by the kidney that is reabsorption that's done by the nephrons or osmoregulation that is maintenance of water and salt balance so the reabsorption cannot be done it can only filter the blood but cannot reabsorb the important things that have gone into the dialyzing fluid so let us now discuss how excretion occurs in plants plants do not have any excretory system but they do produce excretory waste because they are living organisms and lots of metabolic reactions occur in their body cells also so they have to expel their waste materials so here let us now discuss that how do they deal with their waste materials first let us see about the gaseous waste that are produced so gaseous waste like carbon dioxide which is a waste product of respiration oxygen that is a waste product of photosynthesis and there's water also that is produce excess of water so these gaseous waste the plants remove either through the stomata so as you have already learned that stomata are the tiny pores present on the surface of the leaves so through the stomata which are present on the surface of the leaves those waste materials like carbon dioxide during respiration oxygen that is during photosynthesis and water as water vapor during transpiration is lost through the stomata which are present on the leaves or through the lenticels the bark of the trees or the stem they have got permanent openings which are present which are called as lenticels so through the lenticels which are present in this older stem and the older leaves the older roots these waste that is the carbon dioxide and the water vapor is also lost then apart from this the some of the waste materials the plants store them in their older leaves and in the bark so in the older leaves because the plants they keep on shedding the leaves so some waste materials they'll be storing in their leaves which have become old or in the bark and time to time the leaves and the bark they are shed so as when they are shed the waste is also lost then some of the waste materials like they are stored in the older xylem like the latex the latex or the gums and the resins these things are stored in the older xylem which is non functional and try to recall you have learned that xylem it is a dead tissue right so as is it is a dead tissue the living cells are not affected and these waste materials that is gum resin tannin which are stored in the older xylem or in the dead tissues of the plants they are quite economically important products to us we use them for various purposes in case of a living cell 
The living cells also produce waste materials. So in living cells, the waste are stored in the vacuoles. So in the vacuoles, the plants, living cells of the plants will be storing the waste. But because of the presence of the selectively permeable membrane around the vacuole, which is called a stonoplast, the activity or the functioning of the cell is not affected. Right? And some of the waste materials are lost into the soil also through the roots. So some waste materials, the roots also lose through the soil. So these are the different methods that are used by the plants for removing the waste but as such they don't have any kind of excretory system. They either remove their waste materials through the stomata as just now told to you or it may be through the older leaves and the bark. So waste materials are stored in the bark or the leaves and that is shed from time to time. Some waste materials are stored in the vacuoles and some of the waste materials like latex, gums, resins and tannins etc. They are stored in the older xylem which is a dead tissue and some waste materials are lost into the soil through the roots. So this is how excretion occurs in plants. So on the basis of the explanation on this topic of excretion that I have given, here are some questions that is for your assignment and that is to be done in your bio copies. The first question is define the terms excretion and osmoregulation. Then the second question is draw a neat label diagram of human excretory system and write the functions of its important parts. The next question is describe the structure and write the functions of nephrons. Then how is urine formed? What are the factors that determine the amount of water that is reabsorbed during the process of urine formation? Next, describe the working of hemodialyzer or artificial kidney. And lastly, how do plants get rid of excretory products when they don't have a proper excretory system?